Okay. I'm going to be doing a playthrough of Darksiders 3. Um, Why did the creator construct a universe teeming? I am not an elite gamer. I am not a top level button pusher. I'm just a guy having fun playing a video game. Among the scholars of both Hopefully, providing some tips, some instructions, some. Oh, I didn't know that. Along the way. And helping out people to just enjoy the game and have fun. And I'll try not to talk through the cutscenes from now on. Um, this game has really good scripting and dialogue, great voice talent. So I'll just try and keep quiet and let the scenes play out. Kept a robust relationship to the topic. The Nephilim. Spawn of angels and demons. Warriors, relentless, unstoppable, blood man. Until they were betrayed by four of their own. War, death, fury, and strife. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. Inconceivable power was bestowed upon the creatures by those sworn to maintain symmetry twixt order and chaos. The charred council. Bear witness as the council holds court to end the Nephilim War in the name of balance. This is the new pact. War, bringer of worldwide fire. You are the decadent of all pain. Death, dark soul of eternity. You are the deepest decay. You are empty life. Spirit of timeless unrest. You are all that is unsettled in the hearts of that which lives and breathes. And finally, fury. Terrible engine of rage. You are the machine that. Are we to waste our time on ceremony or are we to fight? Step forward and recognize Horseman. You are the most impatient of your kin. The least predictable, dancing on the edge of your own reality. Your brothers understand the undertaking set before them. But do you? Still talking! Shall I have Death fetch us some tea, or can we get on with it? Fury, your role in this story is yet to be written. I wonder. Will you light the flame of creation anew? Or stomp out the embers for good? <laughs> Dreams more thrilling than reality. Had I known the new pact would be so exciting, I would have let walls separate my head from my neck then and there. Is it possible to die of boredom? Rampage. <laughs> Bored as I am. Perhaps you're just lazy. If I didn't love you so much, I'd kill you just for something to do. The call? Finally. Please, please, please tell me you're a planet of demons that needs slaying. Or two. War. What pathetic fate have you brought upon yourself, brother? Watch your tongue. <laughs> I may be least favored of all the horsemen, but my tongue never found me chained to a rock like some dog. Fury, approach us. I take it there is a mess that needs tending to. Though you jest, you speak true. War has broken his vows to this council and shattered the seventh seal. <sighs> the apocalypse. Why would he. We know not yet. As we speak, 
earth falls beneath the spears of heaven and the hammers of hell. So the horsemen are to ride. No. While the Chart Council seeks to understand how and why the traitor war has committed this abominable act, there is a matter that requires delicate attention. You should have called Strife. He's the delicate one. The seven deadly sins have been released. By whom, we cannot say. But the seven roam the earth, free of our prison. The balance between order and chaos is already in jeopardy. The seven cannot be left unchecked. War is in chains. Death is missing. Strife attends to other matters. The last time you faced the sins, it required all four of you. I can handle those fools in my sleep. But when this task is complete, I demand that you grant me my rightful place leading the horsemen. For a title, so be it. But never make a demand upon us, horsemen. You depart immediately. Greetings, Miss Fury. I must admit, this is a fortuitous fate. A watcher? You doubt my allegiance? Please, be not cross. I am such an admirer. Scratch that. I'm a fan. You are the horseman. The only one that matters. Enough! I will allow you to accompany me. Just stay out of my way. I will be as unto a shadow. Steadfast. Silent. More silence! Go! Seek out the place called Haven. Your quest for the Seven Deadly begins there. Fury, wait. I... Whatever has passed between us, search your heart. You cannot believe I am guilty of these crimes. Something is wrong with the universe. Be vigilant, Fury. Forces conspire against us. Heed my words! Alright, let's get started here. We coming to Earth now? Okay, full disclosure here before we get started. I have already beat this game multiple times, and Fury is leveled up to max on all abilities, armors, weapons, everything. Um, quick description of the screen here in the top left. You have the Life Meter, the green bar. You have the Wrath Meter, the red bar. And off to the left of that, you see the Demon Head. That's your Havoc form. We'll go into that more later. That's just a super-powered mode, if you will. Kind of like beast mode, you know, to use the term, where you can really do some damage. Uh, bottom left, you see the various shards you can collect, which grant special power-ups and abilities. Healing, the Nephilim's Respite, do that in a second. Wrath, different shards that grant different things. Wrath shard will refill your wrath meter. Um, Havoc shards will refill your Havoc meter so you can go again. Frenzy shards, they grant a real massive boost to your attack speed so you're attacking like a, like a wild animal. All of these have a cooldown timer except the Nephilim's Respite. Now even if you use a shard and you find that you're getting your ass kicked and you need some to recharge, you can come to Nephilim's Respite and use it immediately. 
and then use it immediately again if you still need to. Um, that's the only one that it takes you a while to build up to the, the full six levels I've got there. But as you go along, you'll get more and more refills for it that let you access it more and more. Something I'm going to do real quick here is use one of these. It's an undying shard. Now what this does is if you hit, get, take a hit that would normally kill you, you won't die. You'll regenerate with most of your life force still intact and you can keep fighting. That way you don't have to go back to the last save point and start again and fight your way through and it's just a pain in the butt. Anyway, pretty cool crater there. See where we're just plowed right through that building. <coughs> hmm. Sorry about that. Okay, so up here we got various creatures, and I don't have a play guide, so I don't know what their actual names are. I just kind of gave them my own names. These guys are just zombies. Um, before we get started, one last thing here. Let's come back here where they're not going to bother us. If you go into the options menu, and I'm on a PS4, um, you can see your levels here for health, strength, arcane damage. You get these by acquiring attribute points. And you can use to level them up. You can mix and match as you want. You could have 200 arcane, you know, and 30 here and 70 here, 190 here and 10 here and, you know, 100 here. Just however you want to do it. Over here it shows you the, the various hollow forms you can acquire. We'll get to that later. Various relics you can collect along the way, which grant different power ups. And if we snap over, here you can see the weapons. Now these ones that are grayed out, don't have them yet. Well, I do, but starting a new game, you start off with your basic whip, and then you acquire the various upgrades and other weapons as you acquire the various hollows that come with those weapons. So for example, the lance comes with the, if I remember right, it's the Storm Hollow, and the Malice with the Force Hollow, and so on and so forth. Consumable shows you what you got as far as different shards, how many you've got, and which ones you have. Ingredients, these are what you'll use to upgrade your weapons and your armor and make them more powerful. You can also grant different abilities. Crystals, these are things you collect along the way and you can shatter them for souls. Oh, something I forgot to mention, on the screen, the main screen and as well as here, you can see in the bottom right, that's your soul count, that's how many you have, and you can spend. Right now I'm at a little over five and a half million, it takes a while to get to that, but Luminous Visage grants an attribute point for shattering it. You want to try and collect those whenever you can because that's an immediate power up. And over here you have your different armors you can acquire throughout the game. Some of these you only acquire in a DLC, a downloadable content, um, called the Crucible. Another one is called the Void. And by beating out those, you can acquire different armors. And you can buy different gear to equip on here. Really makes it a lot more interesting. You can acquire various power-ups. You know, the strongest armor is the Abyssal makes you virtually invulnerable almost impossible to kill you can just go melee combat head to head stand there just slugging it out like Mike Tyson my favorite though is the panoply of champions because it regenerates your havoc bar at a phenomenal rate almost triples the amount of your havoc form duration so that's the one we're wearing right now anyway let's get back to the game and a quick you know, demo of the whip here. You can use various forms of attack. You gotta jump, double jump, dodge button, you can dodge. From, if you just hold the stick neutral, don't touch it, you'll do a backflip. If you're running forward and you hit it, you know, you jump forward, you can dodge to the side, go back, you know, backflip away from this guy, you know, hit him again, do that, dodge forward, attack again, so on and so forth. Kind of standard. So anyway, let's go kill some zombies. These are like the shock troops. Or the cannon fodder of the game. 
And there you see, as you kill them, you can get souls from them. And you can bust these crystals and gain souls out of them. So. They don't attack for that much damage, but they're kind of annoying. Now, destructibles, things you can break. When you're first playing, bust everything you can think of. Benches, trash cans, newspaper stands. You know, just wreck it all. Because there are different collectibles hiding there. And there are a couple ahead of us here, which I'll show you in a second. And you'll, as you play the game, you'll learn you know, what you can destroy and what you can't. This knife flinging little jerk. He's pretty hard to kill. Now I'll show you a wrath form attack here with what it can do. And this is just your base form. Wrath form changes with the different hollows you acquire. But watch this. Boom! And you can smash these rubber cones too. You can, you know, crack them one. Now, just for the sake of showing what it can do, I'm gonna pop a frenzy shard. Now, you've seen how fast she attacks normally. Watch this. Fiori, I hope it's Now, you probably saw me pick up that collectible there. Sometimes when you kill one of the monsters, it drops things that you can collect. And I'll tell you right now that those, the one you saw there, the black guy with the red eyes, the beady eyed little crap head, they're hard to kill, but they usually drop something. Now, see it there? You come over, pick it up, and you know, it gives you stuff. Now, if you time your dodge right, and it'll show you that in the tips that you see on the various screens, you can launch a really strong arcane attack, which helps destroy the monsters. You can beat on the cars. <coughs> Sorry about that. But unless you have like a havoc form attack, or your really strong arcane attack, you can't destroy them, but you can beat on them. There are no collectibles in the cars, at least none that I've ever found. But see there, you smash that dumpster, and you get free stuff. A wrath shard, in this case. And of course you can sprint. Now the game starts off fairly quick. Now up here, see the chains? Things like chains, rope, will denote a place where you can swing across. And what you do, just do like it says, jump up and then press the square button and it activates your whip swing and you can swing across. Okay. Sometimes you need more than, you know, one havoc go around. So set it to whatever you need and then head into the fight. We're going to go in and find the first sin right here. A haven. A haven for what? Vermin? Humans, mistress. Adorable. Build a house of sticks during the end of the world. Where exactly do we go from here, Walter? I... I know not but what the Council commands, Mistress. The quest for the Seven begins here. Envy. Mine! 
humans, Haven, everything here, <laughs> mine. Move on, horsemen, or ye be mine too. <laughs> I'm on a mission. <laughs> Protecting humans? Humans think creation favors them. They are apes crawling through dirt. <laughs> Quite the grudge you're carrying. What they have, I will take. <laughs> when they have nothing left, they will be my playthings until they break. <laughs> you cannot stop me! <laughs> oh, I don't want to. Humanity is tragically overrated. I am not here for them. I'm all yours. No! This is havoc for me. Didn't get to see a whole lot of it, but we'll see more of it later. My frenzy shard ran out, so oh well. Yeah, bitch, watch what I can do. It's going to havoc form again and smash and destroy. In havoc form, you're invulnerable. No attack can hurt you. <laughs> Pretty. Come and get it. Ah, that's mine! <laughs> and there's your way out. supposed to catch envy I did Watch. this talisman it's a vessel. Envy used it to hold energies from the rest of the Seven. It will make a fitting prison for the others once their physical forms have been broken. If I may, there is a... Well, a sort of hum emanating from the talisman. That glow... Will indicate when one of the Seven is nearby. I know. So wise. You are all that the Council promised, Mistress. I'm beginning to enjoy the sound of your voice, Roger. <clears throat> and along the way, as you pick up the various uh, relics, it'll tell you what they do and what you can use them for. We've got a lot of really good tips and tutorials in here. The game's very informative. You know, you're really not left in the dark. I kind of hate that when games don't really tell you a whole lot. You just got to kind of wing it and trial and error. That just bugs the hell out of me. 
Anyway, more crystals. That's cool. <coughs> Nothing much here. We might as well get on our way. Side note, Fury is voiced by a woman named Sissy Jones. Beautiful voice. Love love listening to her talk. They have top-notch voice talent in this game. Really impressed with that. Good scripting too, like I said before at the beginning. So now we're on our way to Haven. And we'll get out of this rat hole. I would be remiss in my duties if I didn't point out that even with the talisman, locating the other deadly sins will prove a challenge. Finding envy was easy enough. That was a gift. One I would not count on receiving twice. Envy was also by far the weakest of the deadly sins. Anything else to add? Only what I assume you already know. The armies of both heaven and hell have cordoned off the world of man into various areas of influence. Look around us. The upheaval we have seen is the very personification of the struggle between order and chaos. You have set for yourself an unenviable task, given these environments. That's what makes it fun. The other sins are hiding across this shattered world. They strike at angels and demons alike in their own selfish bids for power. Their hubris will lead me right to them. Perhaps. But you will need assistance. Whatever I need, I will take, Watcher. Now you may have noticed an addition to the screen up here. If you look right up at the top, top center, it acts like a compass. You know, it tells you which direction you need to go to find the next sin. You know, by kind of locating center and pointing yourself that way, you can see where you need to go. Very helpful. You also, you know, wander around in circles for days trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. As I said, the game's very informative. Really tells you along the way what you need to do. Some people call that, you know, holding your hand. I don't. I don't like wandering around in total confusion, figuring, oh, what, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? You know, where am I going? So, I do, I do like that, just personal. Anyway, here's another swing across. And the crane will fall into the chasm. And... Bye-bye. Yeah, you can't get back to that area anymore. Now, I will say as a side note, Sometimes the game glitches, and you come back around here, and the crane is back, and you can go back across. There's nothing there to collect or do, but, you know, sometimes you can get back across, and that's kind of neat. But the game was designed so that that area is sealed. No going back. <clears throat> this platform here, you see, it serves a purpose. It'll be explained later on as we go through the game. I knew that war would one day unleash all this. But seeing it, <laughs> his gifts are impressive. May I remind you, mistress, that you have no peer among your horsemen, brother. Now there's a guy coming up here that I call a shadow demon. You'll see him here in a minute. Man, he is one tough mother. Now there's more zombies over here, and we're just going to wipe them out the fast way. Boom! Go away. Give me your stuff. I'm going to use Havoc Form to wipe out the Shadow Demon, because, man, he is, like I said, one tough bitch. Zombies, they're easy to kill. More free stuff. Now, as I come over here, watch this guy pop up. Havoc form. Ass kicker supreme. And even in havoc form, this guy, he, he can take a beating. And I'm not even on, like, the more difficult modes, like apocalyptic. 
Because boy, he, even then, he takes everything you've got to kill him. And even now, he's damn tough. See, now in Havoc form, you can smash the cars. Kaboom! And now a tip that I didn't know until I just experimented with it and found out. By pressing the same button combo you use to activate Havoc form, you can deactivate it. So you use it for as long as you need, and that way you don't kill off your meter. And you can see how fast the armor I'm wearing is allowing it to regenerate. Now there's some more free stuff which we can't access yet. We'll need one of the hollows you get in them a little while. Same thing for up here. You can get up here but you can't make the jump. There's an access tunnel up there, but you can also jump from up down here and get it. And my Havoc form is back, but I won't need it for a little bit. We're going to go up here and kill some more zombies. They're going to come running out of everywhere. That's where you're heading next. We're not going to go there right now. There's a couple more places to go. In this tunnel, this elevator shaft, you can climb it, but not right now. You need one of the hollows you'll acquire later in the game. I know I've said that a lot, but that's just kind of how it works. A lot of backtracking in this game, but that makes it fun because you can come back and you know, collect up stuff that really helps to power up your game. And it keeps it interesting because, you know, you're never truly done. You know, one run through and you're there. You can get to go back and collect more stuff. You can just run through and be done, but, yeah. They're going to give you all kinds of free stuff to make you stronger. Take it. All right. Let's get on down the road here. We're heading to Haven. If you drop off there, you can't make the jump on the other side. You got to swing across, but you can jump back up. So anyhow, oh, and if you hear a beeping sound in a few minutes, that's because I set a timer so I don't run over length here. The PS4 can only record video for an hour, so I'll try and keep the video short, around 40, 45 minutes. You know, just a nice playthrough. Oh, go away. Boom. Piss off. All right, down here, we got some more of these freaks. And I'm going to rebuild my raft. Now you see the cooldown timer, but it doesn't affect Nephilim's Respite, but it does affect the other shards. You can't use them until the timer wears off. But I'm going to do a Frenzy Shard. You saw that before. That's one of my favorites, if not my ultimate favorite, because of the attack speed boost it gives. So we'll just hang out here for a second. And... Here we go. Bushwag me, you old bastard. Okay, quick side trip here. Up here, there's free, more free stuff. That wall, again, Force Hollow, you acquire later on in the game. 
We'll let you bust that out of the way. And there's some cool stuff up there. But we can't get in there now, so fuck it. Off we go. Now, see that guy over there? He's got four arms. He's a big brute. He's hard to kill, but not as hard as the shadow demon. So... I'm gonna go Havoc for him. You can't beat him without it. But... Nah. Just, just, just kill him. Now I will say this: one of the one of the game, things about this game that kind of annoys me and a lot of people is that it's a tendency to glitch. If you go around smashing too much stuff in havoc form, you can actually cause the game to crash, and then you have to start over again. You know, from the last respawn point, it's just a real pain in the ass. So try and avoid smashing everything. It's fun, but don't smash and destroy everything with Havoc form because you can cause a game crash. But anyway, there we go. Now once you leave Havoc form, you can't go back into it until your meter refills. Get to that later. Now, in your regular form, of course, you can just smash everything you can, you know, put your whip to. This game has all kinds of hidden stuff, hidden items everywhere. Up there, you can't get to it yet. There's a tunnel up there, you can just kind of see it. Different levels up here, you can walk across on that tree route. We'll get to that in a little bit. All right. Let's go. Perhaps there are human survivors. Not like the Beady eye little bastard. Trying to bushwag me. See how he dropped that? Chunk of oblivion ore. Very, very useful. Need that for building up your armor. And just because why not? I'm gonna use that another one. Tree. It's impressive. But is it just me or is it out of place here? It is a maker tree. Most likely we will find refuge there. Always look around, look up. They'd love to hide stuff up above you. You know, various rooms to go into. You might not... I didn't know this the first few times I went through. And I was like, oh, there's a room in there. Another one hiding back here. Little turd. And as I said, as you play through the game, you'll learn what to smash and what not. What gives you stuff and what doesn't. Oh, let's go up here. More free stuff. Zombies don't usually drop anything, but you can get souls around them. Ah, see that? Free stuff. Couple more up here. Just die. Ruckus. 
says the demon who announces his ambush. Ah, it was not my intention to do battle, horseman. Ah, well, such a passionate little thing, aren't we? Do not test my patience. Very well. War is too hazardous an occupation for myself, horseman. I am here in the name of blind capitalism. I am Volgrim, merchant of the damned. A trader who deals in souls for profit. Even in the face of the apocalypse, one must endeavor to earn a living. And whose souls do you trade in? Angel, demon, or even human. All souls have value to me. I've seen the trail of bodies you've left in your wake. What would I require from you? That depends. What are your needs? Information. The Seven Deadly Sins. Whispers on the wind say that the fabled horsemen are but pawns in a larger game. Victims of a grand setter. What do you know? I know that the first one's free. Call for me if you have souls to trade, and perhaps you will consider my wares valuable. And that platform I was telling you about earlier, that first one, you can use that to, you know, teleport, so to speak, between various locations, a fast travel, kind of like in Tomb Raider and other games. Let you get back and forth quickly. And his demon tongue. They live to confound and feed of the scraps of the world they help destroy. Indeed they do. But despite his thirst for souls, Volga may be a useful tool on this journey. And there again, you know, look around. They hide stuff everywhere in this game. More free stuff. Go out here and kill this guy too. You can't fall off these tree roots, so be careful of that. There's no barrier there preventing you from just dropping off the edge, so gotta watch that. <laughs> the length these roots have grown. They seem to have taken over everything. Indeed, mistress. That place you saw back there with the webbing across it, you'll be able to burn that off later in the game. See up there, a place you can get to, but later in the game. All right, let's get on our way to Haven here. We'll make that our pit stop for the night. Oh, and you can knock these out of your way if you want to. stuff. That's just a collection of souls floating around there, kind of like a ghost.
Now I just took a shortcut to get here, but I'll show you how to get there the other way. So you see up here where you jumped on top of that platform, on top of the building here. You come down here, you can see how you can just follow the path around and find him down there. And now's our approach to Haven. I'm curious as to who remains here, if anyone. And that red symbol you saw down there in the bottom right, that's just a letting you know that you reached a save point. Behind me, we want. Let me tend to our uninvited guests. A horseman. Fury, currently reserving the right to kill you where you stand. And you are? Surprised. I'm more than a little relieved. Call me Ulfane Blackham. So, you'll not be flattening me today? Hmm. A maker, are you not? Aye, when there's something to make. Today, my skills are only aimed towards instruments of death. This is not your war. No, not theirs neither. Like your counsel, I care for balance, horsemen. Humans, frail as they be, are part of the balance. Surely you're here to help protect them. <sighs> Wrong question. <laughs> A tribe of useless, hairless simians whose greatest great talent is inventing ingenious new ways to divide and destroy one another. They could suffer forever or die tomorrow, and I wouldn't bat an eye either way. Then what is your business here? What do they call you? Jones. Jones. Question me again with your last breath. <laughs> Look around. Look what's happened here. Do you honestly think anything scares me now? Easy, lad. This one's none for trifles. Yeah? What do I have to lose? This moronic conflict makes you all look so stupid! Ancient, demon, horseman, even maker! What are you even fighting for, huh? Tell me! I like this one. You may continue breathing, Jones. Horseman, please. To have you on our side would turn the tide in ways we cannot measure. Humanity might stand the chance. While my mission does involve balance, it does not require them. I am here to root out the seven deadly sins and return them to the Council. No less, no more. What if I can help you? That by the chain you carry could use someone. I sincerely doubt that. I'm faring quite well without any help. <sighs> of course. But in case you missed the moniker, I am a maker who specializes in instruments of destruction, chaos, and the deliverance of pain. So it stands to reason that we little Ulfane could enhance your arsenal if your horsemanship would give me the chance. In exchange for? Humanity will not survive without aid. If you come across any humans on your journey, please direct them here. Haven is the only place they might be sufficiently protected. Direct them? How do you expect the apes to cross a battlefield and find you? Oh, I don't. They'll need this, the bridge. Only humans can use it. One touch, they're sent to Haven. Must I touch them? I accept your offer, Maker. Though I doubt it will make your collection any less useless. <laughs> we have a non-deal, then. 
As a show of good faith, a gift. Wrath. Where? You seek a pit of hellstretch set in the nether, beneath the city. And please, horsemen. Yes, yes, I will shepherd the wee ones your way, pointless as it may be. We'll see. And remember, Fury, the doors of Haven stand open to any who ask. And another relic. Alrighty. We'll discuss Ulthane more in the next video, but I'm getting on to about 50 minutes here for this video. So the don't want to go too much longer, so we'll just stop here for the night. This is my favorite corner. And that'll conclude episode one of our Darksiders 3 playthrough. Next time around, we'll have episode two and we'll fight some more bad guys. I'll sign off for now and I'll try and think of some more totally boring and useless stuff to say for next time. And have a good night, all.